Hello, and welcome to the GRACE podcast series. My name is Denise Brock, and I am the Operations Director for the Global Resource for Advancing Cancer Education, or GRACE. In this podcast series, we interview patients, advocates, and healthcare professionals to provide the most updated information for our community and to highlight important issues facing those dealing with a cancer diagnosis. We hope you find this information valuable. For questions or comments, please visit us at cancergrace.org. Um, so at the end of the day, um, a conference from Joshua really set the stage for uh, what we're going to talk about now. And it's really maximizing the benefit of TKIs and, and maximizing their impact with respect to durability of outcomes. And how do we really think about doing that? We can think about doing that multiple ways. One is adding local therapy, which is going to be the bulk of what I'm going to talk about. I think it's an exciting new area, an opportunity to do something we've not really done in the metastatic state. And, um, and then the idea of optimizing uh, systemic therapy, I'll put that at the very end because there are many medical oncologists and, and multidisciplinary team members who are working on that approach. So, you know, as we know, we all know this, this is not anything new to this audience. There are 239,000 expected cases of uh, non-small cell lung cancer in 2023. Um, or lung cancer in general, as per the ACS, uh, majority of the non-small cell lung cancer patients are going to have stage four disease. And so we have multiple FDA approved regimens uh, that are supporting um, that approach. And the real question, um, you know, in my mind, as, as part of the multidisciplinary team is we have realized an incredible improvement in survival outcomes um, associated with this new agents, whether it's immunotherapy, whether it's targeted therapy, and it's associated, and I will not downplay um, side effects associated with these therapies, but significantly improve toxicity profiles with respect to cytotoxics. But we want, as a team of patients and physicians, we want to optimize durability of outcomes for a majority of our patients. And so, that's where, you know, the question becomes, you know, when, when a TKI is working in a majority of sites, um, but there are maybe a few sites of disease that are progressing, um, should it be our um, instinct to switch therapies like it has been historically to a second line systemic therapy? Or should we try to do something different to try to optimize the continued use of that TKI? And so, as all of you know um, in this audience, biology is really what's driving our uh, uh, outcomes for advanced non-small cell lung cancer, whether it's uh, patients with EGFR, ALK, KRAS, RET, MET, ROS mutations. We have now developed a, a, a plethora of, of optimized treatment approaches, at least in the first-line setting, to navigate uh, these different disease entities. Uh, but as radiation oncologists started thinking about these problems in uh, the 1990s, um, Wetzelbaum and Hellman, who were at the University of Chicago, started wondering, is there a way to add local therapy in the form of radiation and or surgery to optimize the durability of our outcomes and to help synergize with systemic therapy to improve um, survival outcomes? And so that's what this idea of limited versus widely metastatic disease and the idea of oligometastatic disease, that's how it gained hold. And so as all of you know, um, disease uh, e evolves. It starts as a primary cancer. Um, it evolves um, in some patients to development of metastatic disease. <clears throat> uh, but Hellman and Wechselbaum thought that maybe it, it, it evolves to a position where there are only a few lesions that, and few sites that the lesions, the primary lesions metastasize through to. And eventually, due to progression of disease, failure of therapy, a combination of both, it goes more widely. And, and what Hellman and Wechselbaum and a number of others thought was that maybe we could leverage that intermediate state to optimize disease control and durability of systemic therapy responses. And so again, as I said, biology drives survival. We need to keep that in the back of our mind as we think about uh, the future of the synergy of potential local and systemic therapies. Thank you again for joining us. 
This podcast was made possible by the generosity of sponsorship from our friends at Lilly and Exalexis. Please like and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Send us feedback, share your story, donate, and visit us for more information at cancergrace.org. Thank you for listening.